we're back at it again and today we're gonna do a little cultivating it's about one o'clock in the afternoon a very beautiful day it's in the 80s today with a, quite a nice breeze and uh, we've actually got a little bit of hay over there that might be ready to bale today but we have a little bit of time so I'm going to do some cultivating while I'm waiting for it to dry a little bit more and then we will rake it. I want to show you my oat field this is coming along really nice. I'm very pleased with the field. It is, uh, I'm, I've decided I'm going to try to get a combine in here and combine it. I don't normally do that. I normally just cut it for hay. But this is such a nice stand, nice crop this year. It'll make some nice grain. And of course I can use all this oats easily for the horses. And it's a little bit less haying that I got to do. Of course I still will rake it up and bale up the straw but uh, that'll be easier than drying it for hay. So it's got quite a few more weeks to go before it will be ready to combine, but uh, I'll keep you informed and updated on that, and hopefully when the combine comes, I can get some videos of that all happening. But uh, we're gonna get to cultivating corn. Um, so I have my old um, McCormick Deering cultivator. This is an old one I bought last year. It's in pretty bad shape actually, but it, it still does the job. Um, the problem I'm having with it is it's just, the horses walk okay between the rows, but uh, the steering mechanism on this is just basically worn out and it's just hard to, to slide back and forth. Um, but it's, it's we're making do. Um, I started off with just three shovels on each side, the first cultivation. This is the second cultivation now that I'm working on. And uh, I had was having quite a, a lot of stuff go through. So I decided to put the fourth shovel on, and I know normally you would put the fourth shovel up to the front, but I'm still a little bit concerned. I'm, I'm cultivating it very deep. These shovels, I don't believe, these actual uh, shoes are not, I don't think they're the right ones. I got them from the Amish, and I really don't think they're right, but uh, that's what I have. And so because of it, it seems like I got to, they're going in quite deep, so we're digging quite deep, which is fine. But uh, it's, a lot of the stuff is kind of just going around. So I put these two shovels together back here, and that's working really good, although it is balling up on me some, as, as you will see. But uh, um, this one here is spread out a little bit more, which is a little bit better. These two are a little bit close, and uh, I could loosen that up and twist that a little bit, but it's really not doing too bad, and it's really, really digging nice and tearing out a lot of the quack grass and the other grasses that are there. So we'll continue with it as is for a little while anyways. So let's uh, head down and see what we can do as far as cultivating. So here's the progress I'm making on my cornfield. Um, I'm doing a satisfactory job on the weeds, but we did have a lot of problems with the birds pulling out plants. Over to our left, it's, there's a lot of plants missing. But then there's a stretch here where it's probably the best spot through here where it seems like the bulk of the plants are still here. And uh, as we get to the center of the field, I had some pretty wide spots just because it kind of came to a point and I didn't want short rows. So I just left it as is. So we got some grass growing down those two spots there, but which, which is fine. And then I've started up through here, but this still needs quite a lot of work here. I ended up yesterday right here on this row right here. And so we will start working this last third of the field and hopefully get that done today. And because of the amount of weeds that I have, more so up on the other end, of course, I was hoping to possibly turn around and do it all over again tomorrow and kind of do it the opposite way that I'm doing it today because some of the grasses were just kind of rolling over and if I turn around then hopefully it will grab them and pick them up and yank them out. So, so this is what we'll be working on today.
So this is where I just came up from and off to our left is where I have not cultivated yet. As you can see there's a lot of weeds here and this is where I've cultivated and then off to the right is still another section that has not been cultivated. This is the top of the field where Trudy had helped me cultivate with Ken a few weeks ago. and. Uh, Back then even the quack was getting really out of hand. So we're still plugging away at it now. And uh, But believe it or not, where I've had sections of ground where the quack is so bad, it tends to be the most fertile ground. And even the with the bad quack, the corn tends to be almost the tallest and best, even with all the quack growing among, amongst it. But of course, the more I get out, the better. But it's uh, it's surely not a crop failure. It's just a sad looking stand of corn, that's all. Okay, I'm plugged up once again. I'm gonna to have to fix this, it's in a pain, so I'm gonna lift it up and try to adjust this a little. I was recently contacted by a company from Sweden that want me to try out their clothes. And so here is a pair of pants I'm trying out, and uh, I want to talk a little bit more about that. So this company from Sweden is called Revolution Race. Um, I'm just reading a text from Abby because I had to make sure I say this right. So this is a company that specializes in outdoor um, clothes and gear, and they wanted to send me some to review them and, and tell you guys what I like about them. And uh, they have, they're actually launching their, their clothing in the United States today. And uh, so they're gonna be available on Amazon with Prime Shipping. And there is a link in the description and anything you buy through that link will be 20% off until July 11th. So what they sent me is this pair of pants, which I had questions about when I first got them. Um, but I'm really happy with them. They are very comfortable, they're very light. Um, the pockets I like on them. One thing I was very concerned with was the legs down here. It's very tight down here, but there's a lot of stretch, stretch to them. So they're able to go over my boots and actually stay tight on my boots so I don't get stuff in my boots. So I really like that. Um, they seem to be fairly rugged made and yet very lightweight. And so I hope this company knows the abuse I'm going to put these pants through because I, I do, I am hard on pants and, and with the work that I do. So, but I've had it and I've used them uh, several days and it's, they seem to do really well. We'll see how, how good they are over time. But uh, yeah, I'm pleased with them. So I, I, uh, I want to wear them some more and see what happens. During the summer months, they're quite light and quite cool. So that's a great thing. So they also sent me a coat. And of course, I hope I don't have to use it too much this year, but it's kind of a, a rain a jacket type of thing. And uh, got a hood. And uh, must be in Europe, the, the zippers are, are backwards, or so they have a lot of left-handers over there because the zipper is on the wrong side for what I'm used to. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's a wonderful jacket. So it's supposed to be completely waterproof. And, um, there again, it's made out of some pretty darn rugged material. So, even in my last couple videos, I've worn the pants. And uh, you can see them in those videos. And so, yeah, if, you, if it's something you're interested in, check it out. And uh, they're supposed to go on sale today in the United States.
Okay, let's get back to cultivating corn. In case you're wondering, that twine on my wrench is there to tie it to the cultivator so I don't lose it. Okay, right, cultivating is done. It is really a nice yeah. day, so I had to get out here and get this hay raked. I think we're going to be able to get it baled this evening also. We have buyers for our hay tonight and we actually have their wagon so we're loading their wagon up and I wanted to stack it on the wagon so I get more on. So I got Brenda to come out and do the baling for me. She'll bale once in a while for me and uh, that worked pretty good. I could easily stack it on the wagon and, and she did all the baling.
it ended up being some really nice hay and we ended up with 400 bales off this piece. Well, I'm glad you could tag along for the day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so and hit the bell and like the video if you like it. And uh, I hope you have a great day. See you next time. Mm -hmm.